Hello student, today we will see INT coin register. This INT coin register is associated with your interrupt control. It is assigned in SFRs. So already we have seen one bit of INT coin for timer as well as serial communication. So the INT con interrupt control register seventh bit is used to enable the interrupt. It is GIE global interrupt enable bit. If GIE is equal to zero, it disable all interrupt. If GIE is equal to one, the interrupts are allowed to happen. See in microcontroller, the interrupts are two types. Mask and unmask interrupt. In mask interrupt, we can disable interrupts. In unmask means microcontroller has to attend or microcontroller give the priority or assign a priority to that interrupt. So when we turn on the microcontroller. So that time what happened or in simply we can say when we power on the microcontroller all interrupts are masked on power on reset or it will reset the microcontroller. In earlier lecture I explained what happened when we reset and when we reset our hardware there are two types like software reset and hardware resets are there. In hardware reset, if you had externally give the reset, that time microcontroller or the address will start from the 00, zero and the interrupt will be masked. That means it neglect the interrupts. So to make it unmasked, we have to set your global enable interrupt pin. Then PEIE and GIEL is peripheral interrupt enable bit if you are using peripheral interrupt then go with the this PIE then in our interrupt service routine I said there are three registers three bits are very important enable flag so the timer 0 IE is for the timer 0 enable enable bit if you want to use a timer as an interrupt we can go for uh, enabling the timer 0 then int 0 ie is external interrupt bit i we know in uh, pk team they are assigned three pins int 0 int 1 and int 2 as external in hardware interrupt we can interface switch on that the pins are assigned for the RB0, RB1, RB2. They must be enabled before they can take, take effect. This is done using INT0IE, INT1IE, INT2IE to enable the INT in external hardware interrupt. One more thing, it is positive age trigger interrupt means low to high apply to this rb0 pin when it raise int0 if will force the pk team to jump to location vector location what are the vector location you are addressed in your program so what happened when you enable or give the positive age trigger pulse to rb0 then it raise int0 if that is flag after enable the next is flag will force the pk team to jump to location to vector address then rbie it is port change interrupt enable bit if it is one enable the rb port change interrupt if it is zero then rb port it disable the RB port change interrupt. 
RB4 to RB7 pins are assigned or it is configured as an input pins for the interrupt to work. RB4, RB5, RB6 and RB7, 4 pins are assigned to enable this uh, port change. So here we have seen in diagram, these are the say, timer 0 and interrupt inter external hardware interrupts but external timer 1 and timer 2 and serial communication and other peripherals are assigned as a hardware interrupt so we have to to enable this we have to enable the peripheral interrupt enable bit then tmroif it is associated with the tmroie it is enabled for timer 0 and it raises the flag for timer 0 whether it is get overflow or not. We already seen in timer programming. Then INT IOF, INT 0 IF that is associated with the this enable and flag raise. Whether the external interrupt is occur or not. If it is 1 then that means external interrupt is occur. If it is 0 then external in interrupt did not occur then rbif it is again associated with the rbi your port change interrupt enable and with the flag at least one of this is one of these from the rb7 to rb4 pins are changed state if it is zero then uh, there is no change in the state of this pin so four pins are assigned for this thank you student